perspective to the topic today is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today is that there is no question that there will be a surprise outbreak. The thing we're extraordinarily confident about is that we are going to see this in the next few years. Thank you. Whoa. That's kind of scary, huh? Dr. Fauci is behind a worldwide conspiracy to kill everyone with a virus so that he can make money with a vaccine. That's the message that I got today. Um, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think 15 different people um, have sent this to me today and asked me to comment. Um, so um, I'm going to. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a pain management doctor, an anesthesiologist um, from Scottsdale, Arizona. I trained in New York City at Bellevue Hospital um, 15 years ago or so. And uh, when this uh, pandemic hit, uh, I went back to help um, and worked in the ICUs, saw a lot of death and dying, um, and then got sick myself. Um, so uh, I'm not an expert on most of these things, but I have tried to talk openly and honestly about what I've experienced over the last uh, um, five weeks or so. And so um, I worked all day. I saw patients this morning at 7 a.m. And then um, I manage clinics in Texas as well. So I worked this afternoon in Texas and uh, literally just got done um, maybe an hour ago. And I got so many messages from people asking me to address this uh, new video that's uh, going around um, pandemicmovie.com that I felt like I needed to. Um, my production value is not going to be as good going forward, guys, because I've, uh, I've got to work and take care of my patients and... Uh, um, you know, make a difference in my in my main field. But I do want to continue to be a voice of reason in the midst of um, one of the biggest crises we've ever seen. And so I wanted to respond to this. I watched this movie. It was 25 minutes. I did a little bit of research. I don't have tons of time to pull out the charts and the graph. This is not my personality. I'm a perfectionist. Some of my videos that I did uh, last week when I was in quarantine, I probably put 12 hours into them and I had that time because I was separated from my family and not working and, and so I had the time, but I don't now. But I was able to uh, put in an hour after work and uh, I want to tell you guys my findings because it's important and a lot of people are getting you know led astray. So the first thing I want to say is I showed you that little clip. That's directly from the pandemicmovie.com uh, website. And uh, I talked about um, bias in an earlier video. And so <clears throat> I just want to tell you guys, they are making a movie that the producers want to make millions of dollars on. And the entire reason this is circulating around social media is so someone can make money. Um, and we have to understand that first. Now, does that mean that these ideas are all not true? No. Um, I think we can dig into the comments she's making to find out if they're true. But certainly the whole point behind this is someone got a hold of her story and thought it would make a movie. And oh my gosh, what a story she has. So I watched this one time. I didn't watch it multiple times. I took some quick notes and I tried to look into um, some of the claims she made. So what I found out is this lady, um, Dr. Mikovits, is super interesting. Um, she definitely, I'd like to have a drink with her and ask her some questions. So she makes some pretty wild claims and I can't go through all of them here because I'm doing this in one take and I'm going to do my best to uh, help people that are following me, but I don't have all night. So I researched a little bit. Um, literally a doctor friend of mine is texting me now about this video. <laughs> so um, she makes some claims about the government and vaccines and Fauci and cover-ups. And um, I looked into every single claim she made and 90% of it's false. Um, but one part that's really interesting is this concept that she was arrested and didn't get due process. So I dug into this and actually Snopes did an incredible job of digging in her to, to her story a couple years ago. And I'm going to um, post a link below where you can read. Snopes did a wonderful review on it. But basically, she made the claim and published in one of our biggest journals, Science, in 2009, um, that um, <clears throat> she made a claim that chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, which is something I see a lot in the pain management space, that it was actually caused by um, retroviruses from a mouse. And so she published this in one of our biggest journals. And then it was this massive conspiracy for the next two years because no other scientists in the world could replicate her findings. And everyone tried and they looked into it and they tried and they tried and they tried. 
and it just wasn't true. And so then I want to read you directly from the Snopes website here. It says, on July 1st, 2011, science editors issued a statement of concern about the paper. On October 14th, 2011, the authors issued a partial retraction of their paper that touched on issues with some of their figures. Finally, on December 23rd of 2011, the editors of Science retracted the paper in full. And this is what Science said. Now, once again, we all got to choose who we're going to trust, but I've been reading Science since I was in medical school, and I think it's an incredible journal and well-published, and I think they're trying to get this right. They're not part of a, a government of, you know, cover-up. It says, Science is fully retracting the report, detection of an infectious retrovirus, XMRV, in blood cells of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. Multiple laboratories, including those of the original authors, Dr. Mikovits, uh, have failed to reliably detect xenotrophic murine leuke leukemia virus related virus XMRV or other murine leukemia virus MLV related viruses in chronic fatigue syndrome CSF patients. In addition, there's evidence of poor quality control and a number of specific experiments in the report. Given all these issues, science has lost confidence in the report and the validity of its conclusions. We are therefore editorially retracting the report. This is an interesting conclusion. We regret the time and resources that the scientific community has devoted to unsuccessful attempts to replicate these results. Wow, that's very different than the story they're telling on PlandemicMovie.com. She tells this story of clandestine behavior and uh, trying to shut it down by supervisors when actually the entire scientific community said that her research was bogus. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because this is kind of cool. She got fired three months later after this, um, probably in the fallout from all this. She was fired, and when she left, um, the people she was working with, by the way, were not a government agency, a private organization in Nevada, they filed a court action saying she stole trade secrets. And, um, and I won't get into all the details, you can read it all below, but basically they filed for an injunction with the courts, so she got due process. A judge granted a restraining order, basically saying you can't destroy this uh, information, you can't take it. He filed a, um, a restraining order, and then I think it gets a little sketchy on how she was arrested. Science actually addresses this and says, hey, there is some weirdness in how she got arrested. But basically, they arrested her, and then they dropped the charges, and that's it. It wasn't a government conspiracy. It wasn't Dr. Fauci. It had nothing to do with Dr. Fauci. That's what's so weird about all this. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read the conclusion of Snopes, and then I'm going to talk about some of the other stuff she said. At the very end, they basically say, therefore, Michael Vitz's speculative claims linking her research to vaccine science, drawing the ire of Big Pharma and the deep state, and her subsequent arrest are not rooted in science or reality. But although she may have lost the support of the scientific community, she appears to have found a new home in the pseudoscientific conspiracy world. So I would say this video, 90% um, of it is false. Um, and more importantly, this is a scientist who's been living kind of outside the bounds of science for at least a decade um, with a lot of pretty crazy ideas that aren't based in reality. Let me address a few of her comments from this video and then, uh, and then I'm going to close. I know my videos get really long. Um, okay, so um, number one, uh, she, this has nothing to do with Fauci. She didn't work with Fauci. It has nothing to do with Fauci. She was fired because her research was falsified. Or at least it was at least it was inaccurate um, and then um, uh, and then they basically um, got a restraining order to try to get back their research and so it has nothing to do with fauci uh, number two she claims that wearing a mask can cause coronavirus that's just insane I'm not going to spend any time talking about that there have actually been probably 500 papers published on wearing masks and while masks don't work as well as we hope masks do prevent disease and no study has ever shown wearing a mask causes the person wearing it to get it so that's crazy please put that thought out of your head um they show this whole concept that gets getting recycled about a liberal approach to mortality i made a whole video on this last weekend and i'm going to repost it below um i will just tell you guys we are losing a lot of people to COVID, but we are losing twice as many people um every single week than what we're reporting in COVID. if you go right to the cdc website um, and they're a little bit behind on their reporting, and I'll repost it below. They'll show 10 or 12,000 deaths in a week from COVID, but in excess of 20 to 25,000 deaths overall. So in fact, we're under-reporting COVID. We're not over-reporting. So I want to make sure you guys understand that, and you can watch my video below on that. Um, so they keep showing these doctors and these nurses that are frustrated, and they're upset, and I get that. When I was in New York, I saw in one shift 10 people die. 
And I could have gone on and made a video saying, oh, our hospital's killing these people and we're doing a terrible job. But that's not reality. The virus was killing these people. There were people, 35 year olds in front of me dying and we were doing everything we could to save their life and they still died. But it wasn't a deep state conspiracy, it wasn't a cover up, it wasn't related to hydroxychloroquine. It was the virus killing this person. We did everything we could and they still died. So I understand why people are making videos and in this social media world, like I get it, but it doesn't mean that there's some kind of conspiracy that's trying to kill people. Um, they do talk about hydroxychloroquine on this video and how it's this wonder drug. It is not. When I first got to New York, um, I spent one day with two of my mentors going over all the research on hydroxychloroquine. And if you want, you can reach out to me and I'll try to respond. I'll send you um, the data. But I read um, every study that's been published on hydroxychloroquine up to about April 6th. Um, I've not gone back and read, read it since then. And I thought the data was pretty poor. Um, they did show in labs that they could decrease it in cells. We call that um, in vivo or in vitro um, versus, that's like in a petri dish, versus in the human body we call in vivo. The in vivo research was terrible. The in vitro research looked pretty promising. I can tell you anecdotally, the patients that I was taking care of in New York, they were all on hydroxychloroquine and they were still dying. So this concept that hydroxychloroquine is the answer and we're, we're trying to um, hide that from people is just not true. Um, and so when you put that thought out of your ideas, and if you don't believe me, then go research the studies on hydroxychloroquine yourself. The data is like, okay, it's not great. Um, when I uh, was diagnosed, I took hydroxychloroquine because I thought the data was okay. Um, but all the patients that we were taking care of were taking care, were taking it and they were still dying. Um, okay, I wanna make a comment because multiple people send these videos and talked about censorship. I don't like censorship. I think when, when we take videos down and label it misinformation, it just feeds into this concept of some deep state and a conspiracy. So I'll just say for all my followers that have asked me questions, I don't think we should take these videos down. I think there should be free exchange of ideas, but I think that people like me and other doctors and scientists, when they see misinformation, could call it what it is. Um, it's misinformation, or as I used to call it growing up, lies. They're just lies. Um, it's not true. And so a lot of people can go see this movie and when it's released and it can make money and that's fine. But if it changes your behavior and makes you make a mistake that hurts your health, that's what really, uh, that's what really bothers me. Um, <clears throat> I want to finish with a message of hope. I'm kind of fired up today because I watched this video and I just made this in real time. I was kind of angry. So um, maybe my tone's different than normal. Um, I just want to make a message of hope. I posted last night a video of workers in New York City um, that I interviewed um, over a couple of weeks. And if you didn't see it, go back and watch it. Um, yeah, we're battling a virus right now that's terrible and it's crazy and it can kill people. But I, I'm encouraged. As I look back on my time in New York, I just am blown away by the humanity of man, by how much we love people, by doctors who flew in from all around the country and weren't even getting paid. Like we'd see these stories of doctors making tons of money to go there. No, there were doctors just coming and volunteering because they wanted to and they wanted to help people and they wanted to serve. And like I see videos online of nurses saying we're killing people and just most of this stuff is just not true. There are doctors and nurses and medical assistants and rad techs working 12 hour days, staying extra trying to keep your mom and dad and your loved ones alive. And I'm seeing the best of humanity. So don't get sucked into all this kind of conspiracy uh, stuff because it's, it's gonna make us miss the point of what's going on. Um, I'm, a, I'm proud to be an American. I'm thankful. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity to help those that are dying. And I can tell you that in my experiences, um, I've seen the best of man going through this, not, not the worst. Um, I think over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna need to figure out what our way out of this is. I've got uh, today 15, maybe 20 requests to, to uh, answer this video. But over the last week, I've got 100 requests to give my opinions on our way out. And I'm just, I'm not really prepared to give that yet because I don't know that I'm um, uh, the right person to be giving that advice. But I will say that we need to um, start to look at what our way out. How do we save the most lives? Um, I can tell you my mom and dad, who are both um, 169 and 170, I would say both over 70, but my mom will kill me because it's not true. She's only 69. Um, they're both in lockdown. I told them to go to their house, hole up until we figure out what's going on. That's my advice for my own mom or dad. And I would say that's my advice to you. But I do think over the next month, two months, we got to figure out a way um, uh, to get out of this. And so I may start to hint at some of that in my videos. Um, if you guys have more questions, feel free to post them below or email me. Um, God bless you guys. Stay safe. And uh, thank you for all the encouraging comments as I've uh, kind of dealt with COVID over the last couple of weeks. Have a great night.